Well, hello everyone on this very, very frigid, at least here in Oklahoma City, three degree day. It is bitter cold outside, but these gorgeous hyacinths and their fragrance are lifting my spirits. What is dampening my spirits um, is the fact that despite all of my best efforts and preemptive measures, I still have frozen pipes, two frozen sinks in my primary bath, a frozen toilet, actually two frozen toilets. I'm grateful that I've got one that's working. And like I say, there is some sunshine out. But nevertheless, it has been brutally cold and it does take a toll on one's mood. So I decided, which is something I very infrequently do, to go back and look at some of my old January videos to see if there were any suggestions on what I can do to dispel those winter blues. And indeed, I, I found one here. I hope you enjoy it. It is a flashback. Um, and after I, I watched it, I immediately got out my polishing cloth and started polishing some silver. So it is a flashback, but nevertheless, hopefully, you'll still find that it has value. You guys stay safe, stay warm, and don't forget to smell the hyacinths. I know a lot of us have seasonal affective disorder because we are light deprived. It's also the coldest time of year, so those of us that are gardeners, we're not getting outside. And my point is that regardless of why you may be feeling blue, you may be worried, you uh, may be going stir crazy, you may be ill from the pandemic, whatever the source of your unhappiness, I thought I would share today some simple little happiness boosters that have helped me and also address a couple of questions you've got I've gotten recently and someone asked me if I was just a naturally a happy person <laughs> and if the sun, I was born with the sun on my face and I really thought through that that question and the answer is no um, I am not I was not naturally a happy person growing up. My mom died at a very, when I was very young, it was very difficult. I came from a large family, it was, it was a sad time. I lost a number of loved ones in my early adulthood. Um, I was very, very fortunate to have wonderful but very strict parents and I, so, so no, I think I kind of was born, a, I, in my younger years, I think I kind of had a chip on my shoulder. And so the reason that I am happier now is because I have really worked on it and I put, put things in perspective and just made myself get over myself. And um, the reason I sometimes say that I am organized is because I am instinctively so disorganized. The reason that I am, I try to be a good gardener is because I'm instinctively maybe a lazy gardener. And so for me, it's, it's kind of, I just try to work on and be the opposite maybe of, of, of how some of my more negative character flaws are. And I think I can genuinely say that now someone who was kind of surly and grumpy and curmudgeon in her youth is now more of, of a naturally happy person. Stuart, would you say that's would you say that's true? Am I a happy person to be around? <laughs> um, so I thought that was an interesting question and it made me and it made me think through it. So I thank you for that. Something else that makes me very, very happy is that yesterday I got unexpectedly, it came out early, a copy of my new book. And this makes me very, very happy. And I will share more about it later. But there are so many beautiful pictures in here, most of which Stuart took. And it's just kind of a, a story of, of my garden and, and it's, anyhow, it's, it was an act of love. So it made me happy to get it. You guys know how to order it. But I, I recognize that not everyone can afford a $30 book. So if you can't, I would just ask you to request that your local library uh, purchase it. This is a tip from Stuart's mom, Susu, who helps us out here. She is a librarian. And she said, if you just call your local library, they will get in a copy. So um, you guys know I love my library. So it will be an honor for me to have one uh, a book that I have written on the library shelves. And then I also got 
finally I ordered myself one of my own calendars and this is the large size but if you guys want to order one of these calendars um, you can get it off of Zazzle and do what I do again it could be a little bit pricey at at full price um, but what I do what I do and I just always wait till they have a sale and then I just buy it at 25% off or 50% off or 20% off whatever and I do like to think that they make nice gifts and Valentine's Day is coming up so there's a little plug for my own products um, so on to my first tip this was inspired by a book that I read the English patient and if you have read it you know that it's about a nurse uh, during World War II who was taking care of an Englishman who had been very, very badly burned in the war. And she is taking care of him out um, in a villa that has been abandoned. And it's got, if you haven't read the book, I highly, highly recommend it. But there was one passage in there where she would say that she would treat herself and it would, and I'm probably paraphrasing, paraphrasing it would give her a little happiness booster and she would go out into the courtyard with some like fingernail scissors or small scissors something of that nature and she said because it just gave her great joy and a sense of control she would take like a 12 by 12 foot or, or a, a 12 inch by 12 inch area and she would just mow the lawn or trim that little section with her fingernail scissors and she said it gave her so much joy and a sense of control so periodically when it's too cold to work outside when i'm feeling worried about something or out of control the world is so crazy right now that i will periodically do this 12 what i call 12 inch by 12 inch happiness booster so this happens to be an area that I traverse frequently because I'm always taking out the trash through this gate. And I have this little area here. It's been extremely windy lately. And I have this whole area here where all sorts of red bud seed heads have, have blown in and it's kind of, it looks unkempt and kind of messy. And I see it every day when I walk out to take out the trash. So I periodically will just take one 12 inch by 12 inch area and really clean it up and groom it. You can do this in your house, in a closet, but for me it's important that it be in an area where I will notice it and appreciate its new state as I make my daily rounds. So I'm just kind of cleaning up this little area here. It's right in front of the fireplace. And typically, I promise you, this is another probably little trick to being organized and neat and habit change. I usually notice that once I get started, it goes well beyond just a 12 by 12 inch area. But I'll just take a little area and I will clean it up and get it looking tidy and groomed. If I need to, I will kind of replenish the gravel I'll then take this bucket to my compost pile. And like I say, it's hard for me to stop once I start because it's so gratifying. But I have one area then that is nicely groomed. And when I go in and out that gate, I feel an immediate sense of accomplishment that I've, if nothing else, I've gotten something done for that day and it just gives me a little small boost of happiness and control over my daily rounds so there you go there is my little tip on 12 by 12 inch happiness you might want to try uh, give it a try to see if it works for you my question of the day is do you do anything small like this that helps you feel a little bit more in control and gives you a little bolst of joy or happiness when you're feeling blue worried or depressed so that's my question of the day now let's move on to the next one 
Well, I hope you get a little vicarious jolt, a uh, little vicarious mood boost out of this next tip. And this is what I think of as making something dull shine. And that can be anything. But I, I noticed around Christmas time that I started polishing my silver, something I hadn't done in forever. And it gave me such a little just a little jolt of joy to do it. And so I realized it was because I love making dull things shine, whether that's get cleaning my windows, exfoliating my skin, um, really whatever it is, I like some, to make something dull shiny. And so here we go. I've got two silver spoons here. St Stuart asked if, what was I doing with a swastika? <laughs> I said, oh, that's not a swastika. This is an antique Anasazi symbol of, of a spoon that my husband gave me. years ago actually for Valentine's Day and so what I'm gonna do is I am just going to shine this up and you can do this obviously with any silver you have a friend of, of my mother-in-law's Marilyn Roth she used to do this in the middle of the night when she would wake up and she couldn't get back to sleep she collected old silver and she used to do this in the middle of the night, and she said it, it just kind of soothed her and was a nice de-stressor. So I am using some of this Wright's Silver Cream. I got it off of Amazon. And periodically, you guys, sorry, Stuart, periodically I will also do this with pieces of silver jewelry I have. And I think one of the reasons I didn't do it more frequently was because I kind of like the look actually, of things that are tarnished. I like the, the fact that it looks old. But in, how long did that take, Stuart? Less than a minute. And I could definitely do a better job on this. But in less than a minute, I have really shined up something. It just makes me happy. And now I can use this in a sugar bowl. Actually, I think I'm going to use it upstairs in my bathroom for bath salts. So there is something that you can do. And by the way, it's a wonderful thing to do when you've got, I have all sorts of these little baby spoons, silver baby spoons that my boys had when they were little. And you sometimes kind of don't know what to do with them. Well, this is a way that you can transform something like this into something more useful and maybe use it on your bar or, again, use it in a sugar bowl or sometimes even if I've got uh, supplements or something like that that we need to take, you could put it kind of in your medicine bowl. Obviously this one needs a little bit more work, but it's just a one, a, a fun way to brighten up, recycle, and repurpose something that you've got in your drawer, and it gives you just a little bolt of happiness, bolt and jolt of happiness. So make something that's dull shiny. Well, this may seem like a strange one, but it's something that I rediscovered recently, and that is ironing. Now, how I came to this is because I, there was a period of time over, over the holidays when I was really pretty worried about something, and I was too um, unhappy, I guess, <laughs> to be very productive, so I just found that I, I kind of just laid around. And I, for the first time in years, I watched way too much TV. I had never, before the holidays, ever binge watch any show. And I found myself binge watching different shows and then afterwards I wouldn't have gotten anything done, I wouldn't have been moving, I wouldn't have been very productive, and I just felt icky. Um, if, if you guys can relate to that, I just, I wasn't being productive, but then I was kind of 
depressed and I didn't have enough energy to do anything else. So I went back to my youth and I remember how I grew up in a family of 10 and we girls had to do all of the ironing for the entire family. And I remembered that when I was younger, I would do the ironing as I would watch old movies. And so I thought, well, maybe I should find my ironing board, pull it out, and do some ironing while I am binge watching these TV shows that make me feel kind of guilty because I'm not being productive. And lo and behold, it really did, I found it kind of soothing. Since I'm always cold in the winter time, the fact that it is warm and it exudes heat was, I found it comforting. I found that it made me feel as if I was creating order out of disorder. And then when I would see these things, like here, you guys know that I wear all of these bandanas in the summertime, and typically I don't iron them. But when I was cleaning out my jewelry closet, I found this just basically a pile of them. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna iron all of my bandanas and have them in a nice neat stack when I look in my jewelry closet. And it will make me feel again as if I have a little bit of control in a world where I have not a lot of control. And if you are sensing a pattern there, then yes, most of the time I am unhappy or whatever, it's because I feel out of control, either because of someone's illness or uh, sometimes it might be financial difficulties. Um, we've often heard that expression, you're only as, as happy as your most unhappy child. And so sometimes if I'm worried about my kids or whatever, then um, I, I just feel out of control. This almost instantaneously not only distracts me from my woes because I'm watching something on TV, but it also makes me feel as if I'm restoring a little bit of order to my chaotic world. And it makes me feel as if I'm just a little bit mini productive. So there is my third mood booster, which is a little bit strange, but ironing. Well, this little happiness boost, I discovered when my boys were little, and I don't know it so much as, as a, a mood booster as it is an, a, a healthy distractor. So when my kids were young, they suffered all of the same kinds of angst that children typically do. So when my younger son, Jamie, would have missed the last free throw in a basketball game and he, he was torturing himself and thought that he had lost the game, or when my older son was in high school and had asked, uh, I think he was a freshman, and he'd asked a senior out to the prom or something like that, and he was devastated when she turned him down. Those, kind of, uh, those kinds of superficial um, childhood angst that you had, but then can also be, I think, interpreted in another way when you're older and you are worried about something and you just can't get it out of your head and you don't have the energy to do anything else and you just need a distraction. Well, here is a really good mood boosting distraction. And that is, and I don't have one here because it's hard to, sh to have a show and tell for this one, but that is to listen to a book on tape or listen to an audio version of something that you love. So with my kids, I would put on all the audio books of Harry Potter. They loved them growing up. The story, of course, was so compelling. And they also loved them because it made them feel kind of warm and fuzzy because it made them remembering them. So on some occasions, even when they were in junior high and in high school, if they were really stressed out and they just couldn't keep their mind from going to those dark places and overanalyzing situations, I would put on the Harry Potter books for them and they would find it really comforting and very soothing. So I started doing the same. And when I've 
really feel like life is difficult and I feel like the world is picking on me, what I like to listen to are memoirs because that, again, it puts things in relief and it puts things in perspective that not only do bad things happen to other people besides just me, duh, but it also is so inspiring because I can hear then how other people were able to navigate through a hard time, transcend a hard time, come up with coping mechanisms, and in most cases, there is nice redemption at the end. So recently, I've been listening to the memoir by Katie Couric. Prior to that, I listened to a fascinating memoir by Alexandra Fuller, who grew up in Africa. Um, I love to listen to historical memoirs, pieces of history, because they make me realize that during times like these, there have always been times like these. And I am not the first, you know, it, it ain't my first rodeo and it isn't humanity's first rodeo. And so I find it really inspiring. I get lost in their story. And quite often it gives me tips on how I can reframe something that is sad to me or reframe something that seems very problematic and reframe it as a challenge or an opportunity. So that would be my fourth tip, is listening to something that is inspiring to you, but will also distract you from whatever is making you blue or down in the dumps. Well, obviously, fresh flowers are always a happiness booster, and I love orchids, and I kind of overindulge in orchids, but trust me, they give me a jolt of joy every time I come in here. But something else recently really gave me a jolt of joy, and I think through this these past couple of years with the pandemic and social unrest and the the politicalization of our society and everything, I think we're constantly bombarded with the, the effects of, gosh, what next? What next unexpected um, horror or thing are we going to have challenge? Are we going to have to confront? And then something really wonderful happened, and that is a sister of mine got engaged. Now, she and I were very, have always been extremely close. She is now in her 50s, and I didn't get married until I was in my 30s, and we both used to say we were never going to get married. We were part of that. We were more likely to be shot by a terrorist than find a husband generation, and we had on our refrigerator... Uh, a wonderful card. My parents got such a kick out of it because she and I, uh, we were constantly teasing each other. And there I found a card that showed two old women um, that were standing over a tombstone. And the caption on the inside was, Melissa and Beatrice would leave no stone unturned in their pursuit of the perfect man. And I got such a kick out of that and I sent it to my sister because at that time we both were in despair that we would never find a man. Well, I finally found one in my 30s and she, she and I were both kind of young career, single professional career women for a long time. She has her PhD, she's extremely accomplished. And I think after a while, marriage just wasn't a priority to her until she just recently met, or I shouldn't say recently, about two years ago, met the love of her her life. And in their, their late 50s, they are getting married. They could not be happier. They're absolutely thrilled. Her life has completely done a 360. And, and the, the message there is that I remind myself to give myself a little jolt of happiness is that not only do unexpected, unexpected bad things happen, but sometimes really unexpected, wonderful things happen. And when I reframed it that way, now I find myself continually looking for really unexpected, wonderful things to happen. Um, and I, I am just much more aware of them. I'm much more mindful and I find myself looking for them. So there's another kind of technique to make you feel a little bit better is not only do unexpected bad things happen, but sometimes really wonderful, unexpected great things happen. 
And speaking of unexpected things that you that happened that you were not looking for and they were just very unexpected, and that is that Stuart and I now we met how many years ago, Stuart? four years ago or whatever and we just kind of immediately hit it off but who knew that he and i would become best buds and business partners and that his family members would become i consider them family members of mine and who knew Stuart, that 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 would happen so speaking of unexpected little joys um this this next one is uh, again it's a, i don't have much of a show and tell for it but I, I have found myself doing this a lot. So whenever I am feeling, oh, like my life isn't exactly as I would like it, i.e. perfect and whose is, uh, I, and particularly I noticed that I was doing this during periods of time when I was feeling unsettled or, or like my, Oh, I don't know, like my, my life just wasn't where I wanted it to be. So what I found that I would do is I would go, instead of going forward in time, I would go backward in time. And I would compare my present self and how I was to my younger self and think, what would the younger version of yourself think of the older version of yourself? And when I put it in that, in that framework, I quit feeling so down about myself and I started feeling like, okay, well, I have accomplished, I have accomplished some things. So my early 30 year old self who wasn't married, who just worked all of the time, I didn't think I'd ever have a family. Um, I, I just wasn't very happy about things. I had a bad relationship, you know, or a relationship go sour. Uh, and then I think, well, what would that person then think of the person that I am now that is happily married, has two wonderful, wonderful sons. I have great friends. Um, I've written a book. I never thought I could write a book. Um, I never thought I could have a beautiful garden like the one I lusted after, and I, and I do have that. So other areas of my life that I am dissatisfied about kind of then pale in comparison to when I think about, okay, what would that 30-year-old person have thought of my, my now 60-plus something person? Well, she would think that ain't such a bad place to be. So quit feeling sorry for yourself. Um, look at what you have accomplished, not what you have yet to accomplish. And try to just make that constant inner critic just shut up. And I, I had wonderful parents, but they were both, I think, pretty highly critical. And they were the kind of not then uncommon uh, of that of that era, but parents who would more often find you doing something wrong than ever catch you doing something right. And so you sometimes felt like enough wasn't ever enough, and you tend to grow up with that mindset. And I think now that I'm a little bit older and hopefully a little bit wiser, I now don't think, well, what would my parents think or what, you know, whatever. I think, what would the younger version of myself think about the older version of myself? And I think that younger person would say, okay, you ain't such a bad broad. I kind of like who you've turned out to be. So just give yourself a break. So compare your younger self to your older self. Go back in time and try to put a new perspective on where you are at this point in your life when you're feeling kind of down on yourself. Well, obviously, trimming my topiaries makes me happy, and that is probably next on my agenda. And Stuart, if you would show how dirty my windows are. And one of the things I asked for for Christmas was to have my windows clean, the storm windows, the whole shebang. I haven't had that done in years. And so that's an example of making something that is dull, shiny. And Hubs is, was so sweet and he gave me a gift certificate and we're working on that process right now, kind of having to work around the weather. Okay, this last one um, is born of a discussion I had with a friend of mine the other day. And 
just just look for anything no matter how bad things are just look for anything you can hang your hat on and i was talking to this friend who's been really going through a difficult time her father's ill she is suffering from some some health issues of her own um, I had recently been really sick over the holidays and we were both just kind of grousing and, and griping and we both kind of looked at each other like, oh my gosh, we've got to put a stop to this. And so I said, okay, for this moment in time, let's find one thing. No, you know, obviously I'm, it is not lost on me how fortunate I am and the irony of me even saying that. But we both looked at each other and I said, okay, here is, here is my thing that at this moment in time, I am so grateful for. And I think sometimes now we talk about gratitude as a way to uh, be a mood elevator and help, help alleviate depression. Now, I think it's almost become a, a cliche, but in the G James Clear methodology of really breaking it down into things that are granular, uh, this is what I came up with. And I said, you know, I said, here is something at this moment I do not ever want to take for granted. I don't care how unhappy I am, how destitute I am or whatever. But in that moment in time, if I am not nauseated and I am not throwing up, then life is good. And over the past year, I had a couple of different episodes where I ended up in the emergency room because I just was so, so, so sick. And I just am appreciating, I'm appreciating it right now. Nothing to me is worse than being nauseated. And so right now, the fact that I am not nauseated just immediately makes me feel better. In addition to all of the other wonderful things I have to feel good about. And she laughed and she said, you're not. And I said, no, I am not hugging the porcelain. And she said, and you know what? My legs that have been bothering me for months, my sciatic and everything, she said, at this moment in time right now, I just realized my legs are not hurting. And so we both high-fived each other and said, well, at this moment in time, I'm not puking and you can walk without pain. And that is something to be happy about. And we started out complaining and we both ended up in kind of a fit of giggles. And I think sometimes we just have to just, even if it's something as simple as, I'm happy, I'm healthy, my family is happy and healthy. No matter what else is falling apart around you, you at least have those things. And so at, I will leave you with that. My number seven, right now I am getting just a huge uh, serotonin and happiness boost by the fact that I am not nauseated. So let me know what little or big things help you pull out of a funk and make you happier today. Well, here is my outfit of the day. I'm actually shooting this video right before I go to brunch with some friends. So I'm definitely a little bit more zhuzhed up than I would normally be to just do, go through my household rounds. But today I have on a Patagonia white, uh, what do you call these, Stuart? Weatherproof, parka, whatever, um, that I got in Tulsa at an outdoor store. Um, my top is actually really cute, you guys. It's got these kind of flamenco sleeves, and it's a turtleneck, a lightweight turtleneck, and I got this off of Poshmark, second hand. I can't remember the brand. It's one I didn't recognize. Um, my pleather pants, uh, that's hard to say. I got at a really cute boutique, one of my favorite boutiques in Oklahoma City. It's in the Paseo called Eden. And my boots are Michael Kors, and I got these from Nordstrom Rack. Uh, my earrings are from Janet Mavic Orchard Jewelry. These are called the Neil Fleur, sorry Stuart, Neil Fleur design and somebody commented and one is so i guess very sweet and very observant um wanting to know if hubs and i were okay because i did not have on my wedding ring in so many of the videos and that's only because if I'm working outside or I'm really cleaning house or things like that, I don't wear my wedding ring because I don't want it to get scratched. But definitely, Hubs and I are okay, and I've got my wedding ring on to go out to brunch. Uh, my bracelets 
are, this is actually a really pretty choker that belonged to my second mom. I have it just on here as, as a bracelet and then this little thin gold chain bracelet belonged to my mother-in-law. So there you go, there's my outfit of the day.